why would I choose epifluorescence microscopy to examine my soil, compost, roots, mycorrhizae, all the above? Why would I choose this form of microscopy? Well, let's start with why you might not at first. <laughs> because um, traditionally it was very expensive. And, you know, until now it wasn't taught in universities. So it's been very expensive because it was mercury vapor lamps. And so incredibly dangerous. And they had to actually not use the lamps. They're only like 30 hours in the lamps or something like 30,000 hours in the lamps. And they had to take it out early. And it was it were like, to explode. So it was very dangerous to be around these things because they might leak. And it, it they still had to do all these caustic things to get the image that they wanted. And so I'm talking about like the traditional arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi image with the with the arbuscule looking like a tree. That's a destructive process. So this was a breakthrough. This LED lamp was a huge breakthrough, fraction of the cost of, 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 of the traditional university. But I figured out a workaround that's fraction of this cost. So instead of tens of thousands, instead of thousands, it's hundreds. And so this opens the door for everyone to participate. And I mean, you could probably find a microscope used, probably find a monitor used, and probably could, you know, find these light sources reasonably priced and, and do what you need to do, depending on where you are in the world. And even though it's not taught outside of universities right now, I'm about to release a program where it is. And so this knowledge is going to spread and help more and more people. And the greatest thing about this, um, we're, we're about to get to. So now why should you check it out? What, 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 what are the benefits of epifluorescence microscopy? Uh, is it just shiny pictures? Is it just glow in the dark stuff? Are you using stains? All that kind of stuff. Let's get into it. Because there is a way for you to do it at home with a bright field microscope if you can attach a camera that connects to a monitor. And so I'm gonna showcase this later on a video probably next week so everyone can get access so everyone can be doing this because there's very important reasons it's the best way to visualize fungi and my, you know, mycorrhizae um, uh, mushrooms uh, di fungal digestion of substrate uh, it all the above and the reason is fungi auto fluoresces at the blue light frequency because that's the frequency of light that reaches most of this action where there's decomposition, where there's soil microbes, that's the amount of sunlight, that's the wavelength of sunlight that actually reaches them. So this blue light is much more accurate for looking at the world as it is. And in fact, if you look at plants, they've got these little sections, their, their cells, they look like little sections of glass that you can see through and see into. It's, it's really, really wild. And, I, and that's why it's so useful because it's a much more accurate portrayal of the world from their perspective. So they're seeing this wavelength. The, underneath the soil, there's a super highway of these mycelium, this, this hyphal highway that's glowing. And the bacteria glide on the outside of the fungi because there must be moisture for it to be there. And it produces moisture in its activity. And so they're gliding along the surface of a glowing highway. That's what nature is. So very much like Avatar, right, right, right. That's literally what's going on. And so we can see a truer representation of what the environment of soil and compost is when we're looking through that frequency of light. And this is why people like Peter McCoy are interested in this and other mycologists are so interested in this because you can take a root or a piece of fungi or a substrate and put it under there on a slide with no cover slip, no water, just boop, and you can visualize it. And it's incredible because the light comes from above, not from below. Brightfield has got to crank that thing up to get through that leaf. Meanwhile, it's like you go off that leaf slightly and it's like piercing your eye through the eyepiece with magnified light, focused light. That's way too bright. I am not a fan of eyepieces. I'm actually against eyepieces. I'm, I'm for monitors because the reality is uh, within a few years, there's not gonna be eyepieces. 
is just going to be monitors because we can see things much more comfortably and more accurately on a 4K monitor where it's like a distant from our face and not like, you know, peering in through these eyepieces. And when it's on the screen, you can videotape it. You can take pictures. You can really capture things, slow things down later on. I mean, if you've got a crazy nematode flying around and it's, it's not holding still for you yet, uh, sometimes you just got to like let them calm down. I know some people like flame them. I... I typically let the slide sit and then like wait for them to calm down or I switch light sources uh, so that the light doesn't hurt them as much. And so uh, there's just, a t just tons of things that you can do. The reality is when you are evaluating slides, when you're evaluating roots, when you have epifluorescence, there's a whole other level that you achieve. So you, you can actually take a picture of a root and then you can put a grid over it and you can color in the parts that are inoculated and then count the, the others that aren't and create a ratio or percentage. And that's your inoc and that's the professional way to do it. Inoculation rate. That's already been established. I didn't create that. And so that's something that like a fifth grader could do. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so this is not hard and it's very useful. I mean, if you do a whole inoculation, you do a test of several different plants, and the roots, and you're like, oh, wow, I've only got 20% inoculation. Usually it's 40% right off the bat. You know you need to go back and re-inoculate and do a soil soak with the inoculants again. That kind of insight's just, just the tip of the iceberg. It allows you to ev evaluate plant tissues, um, the phloem, you get to see where the actual fungi are inside the plant. And you can even add in natural light from above, uh, from below if you open the condenser. And you can actually get a composite image of both bright field and epifluorescence when you do that. It's really, really wild because it's the light from around it that's diffuse. Rather, because it's shooting from below, you don't have a light source from below that you're actually, you're opening the condenser and letting in natural light. It's different, it is different. And you could, you could even do um, dark field and I, I've done dark field with epifluorescence as well. So there's a, there's a, a whole world that opens up and dark field is just scattering the light. Um, you basically put a dark circle, you know, in the middle of your condenser and that's why people make these things at home to do it. Not hard, you can do it. I've got an oil one for specific reasons. Um, because I really want to get a different uh, quality level of image, but you can make this at home just very easily and and, and get the same effect um, and and see everything too. So, but but back to epifluorescence, the live dead stain allows us with a hemocytometer to actually evaluate things accurately if we're doing counting, if we're doing that, or we're creating images to send to an AI to do the counting for us. That's the most accurate way to do it. There's also the viability stain like FDA, which is more expensive and less accurate, but those are an options and those are stains and they only work with epifluorescence. If you have a microscope now that can do bright field and a camera that's HD or 4K that can connect to a monitor, you can already adapt your current microscope to be epifluorescence. And of course, dark field, like I said, so suddenly you have three microscopes in one and then you might be adding a polarized lens to that to examine minerals more accurately. And suddenly you have four microscopes in one. And that's what I'm doing. That's what I encourage everyone else to do is to, to, to actually have their microscope transform from just bright field to multiple ways of viewing things the easiest way possible in order to not disturb the slide so that you can take multiple shots of the same thing in different states so that or different wavelengths and, and perspectives so that you can get a much better and more accurate understanding of what's actually going on because in dark field i mean you can see the colors of the minerals in a completely more realistic way in the blue light you can actually because because in dark field it's, it is still natural light it's just diffuse and so it's actually m much easier on the microbes because they're not being just blasted with that light. And so they behave differently and they look different. And, and there's a lot of things that look like glass that are alive. And it looks much more like the ocean and, and the galaxies. So dark fields, its own, its own important thing. But my point is, 
is that you can do all of these things. You can join us. You can participate in the R Soil database. You could be compiling information and adding it in, getting recognized, contributing to the science, and helping people everywhere get a better understanding of how they can understand their soil, understand how nutrients cycle, understand how healthy soils look and behave. I'm so excited about this Kickstarter. We're almost to the first goal, but we have stretch goals. We've got, I want to do an app. So um, there's going to be some amazing things. So please support and spread this Kickstarter for regenerative soil microscopy. The link is down below. Thank you so much. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. And I will see you soon. Regenerative soil microscopy is a manual for how to explore, assess, and evaluate your soil, your compost, your roots, mycorrhizae, and microbes, and more. And it's all stepped out. So it's visual. It's also written. But you'll be able to follow along like a picture book and, and copy the steps. You'll be able to learn how to operate a microscope. You'll be able to learn how to work with stains. You'll be able to learn bright field, dark field, epifluorescence, all the most powerful modes of microscopy you'll have at your fingertips. And you'll be able to capture, catalog, assess, and evaluate, and then make clear choices and decisions to improve that soil. And it's going to take a public database to organize this information so that we can run this data against itself and that we can expose all these caveats and connections and get nearly an infinite amount of feedback and insight possibilities out of over 100 points of distinction that you can run against each other, as well as DNA. So. The DNA sequencing is gonna unlock things even more and allow us to understand microscopy at such a deeper level. We're gonna be able to check our answers, but when a thousand or a hundred thousand entries have been entered and we start connecting these things and going across bioregions, across pH, it will open the door to data that no scientist has ever had access to before and it's going to be public so we all have access to it so that information doesn't get locked up. But I need you to know how to operate your microscope and to catalog these things and interpret these things so that you can add to the database and be part of this. So I built an online community training and certification program that dovetails and goes deeper than the textbook. So it's we're there working together. There's live Q&A. There's live demonstrations, and there's an online community where you can connect with people from all over the world interested in soil science. A new horizon in soil science is upon us, and you're all invited to participate. And remember, it's a Kickstarter, so if you don't support it, it doesn't happen. Get Regenerative Soil Microscopy, the book, the course, and join us in the R-Soil database.